All right, it is nine o'clock. So I see a few other people are joining. So um, as we do that, if you could drop into the chat box um, your introduction, your your name, title, organization, please, that would be great. Um, <clears throat> as we've been doing all along, just a reminder to everybody that we record these meetings um, and we make those available on our website and also the minutes, the meeting minutes are available there as well. Um, on. I don't see Elise yet. Um, in terms of our agenda today, um, I don't have it to post. I do have the slides. But uh, Elise, uh, Elise just joined. Okay. Elise, if you're on and you can, um, and if you could put the agenda up, that would be great. Uh, we are at a stage, um, if you all recall, you all recall when we started this, we had said that we wanted to wrap up our work by November, and we are in November. It's hard to believe, um, but we have, I think, achieved the goals that we set out to, to achieve in this group. So um, unless we have discussion today that suggests we need to continue, um, I think this will most likely be our last meeting. So I just want to thank everybody for their engagement in this work and for getting us to this point. So when we set out, we wanted to look at activities that were happening in the area. We wanted to learn and, and really endorse in many ways the OPM's P20 Win Initiative and look for broader state participation. And then thirdly, make um, some progress on identifying indicators and metrics of behavioral health system functioning and performance, which we'll talk about today. And um, all of this goes up to the Children's Behavioral Health Advisory Board and 12 state department commissioners. So um, today we're gonna take a look at a draft report that's based on the work that we've done over the last several months, get your feedback on that report and then identify any next steps to include. Um, and we left that section blank if you've had a chance to look at the draft. So with that, I will turn it over to my partner in crime, Tim Marshall to introduce himself and we'll go from there. Yes, great. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for again for joining and uh, sticking through. Yes, we're hopeful that this may be our last meeting, but we'll let the group decide. But uh, we're feeling like our work is done. Um, we did spend the last couple of meetings on the data indicators that we'd want to utilize for um, system improvement or measurement, or how do we know uh, whether we're doing well in children's behavior health in Connecticut. Um, so I think we have uh, a decent list there. Um, I think we established very early on after we canvassed the entire um, state for a bunch of different data integration projects, we learned that there was a lot out of there, out there and that um, the furthest along in terms of developing um, further need for developing of infrastructure, but then figuring out where uh, we would want to support um, kind of the data development agenda for the state. And it was really the P20 win project that was by far and away uh, where we believe uh, we should put our support as, an, uh, as a group. And so we are putting forth that recommendation. We kind of uh, led with that out of the gate in the first couple of meetings and uh, this group endorsed that. So that's gonna be the number one and the strongest recommendation. With that, the one that we don't always say out loud is it would be great if as state departments uh, uh, join the P20 win project is if they are able to dedicate or develop or begin to identify resources to support the P20 win project. Uh, I think that infrastructure development could really use some um, ongoing uh, resources involved in uh, to, to help move that um, long-term agenda forward. So just wanted to mention that. Um, and then finally, again, just to kind of over uh, do a quick overview of what this group's um, kind of final uh, recommendations are uh, above and beyond that. So um, thank you all for joining and I'll turn it back over to you, Jeff. Hey, thanks, Tim. Uh, so I will share some slides here. Okay, everybody see that? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so this is just a few slides here today, uh, just to kind of give an overview of the report. We did want to get a draft of the report out to you all uh, with a little bit of lead time, at least. Hopefully you had a chance to look at it. That being said, we did rearrange a couple of things. Um, and you'll see that in the way that we've laid out the slides that we moved, like, for example, move the recommendation sections to the end. It was kind of plopped into the middle. 
in the draft report um, and we move that over to the end um, and some things along those lines. Um, uh, we stated the goals earlier, so I won't go through that again. In terms of our process, we did want to spend some time in the report just talking about the meetings that we had and what we talked about. Um, we So we'll spend some time and have sections in the report on both the P20 win and the 500 familiar faces projects, um, as well as any all the lessons learned from initiatives that are going on in the state and some of the insights that came up from our conversation. So the importance of getting leaders involved when it comes to data integration initiatives, we kind of lifted that up as being a very important principle for the work. Um, we also talked in this group about um, inconsistency in use of certain technologies or tools for data collection analysis. And um, in addition to that, inconsistencies in things like demographic data and how those data elements are collected and a need for more consistency. And also um, what we've observed over the last several years as increasing rates of missing data on key demog demographic characteristics. So for example, um, on race ethnicity, where it makes it difficult to um, more difficult to look at disparities and to drive more equitable decision making and funding in the behavioral health system if we're missing increasing amounts of demographic data. Um, we also talked in this group about the, the need for data governance. So, um, and I think the P20 win initiative is a good example of how you can start to streamline some governance around data sharing and integration. And then also we talked in this group about the need for unique family IDs uh, so that we're not looking just at children in isolation, but we're able to look at children within the context of families and caregivers and examine data from that perspective. And I think also, uh, I, although it's not bulleted here, I think in any data integration or data driven type report, I think it's important to talk about um, security and confidentiality of information and we'll be sure to include that in there as well, because I know that that was raised a couple of different times in this group. Um, without listing every single indicator on the slides here today, um, just as a reminder, I thought the framework that we developed was actually one of the one of the more important things that we came up with in this group and categorizing um, how we want to look at the data system at the system from a data perspective around these key categories. So um, how do we ascertain more about what the need and prevalence of behavioral health need is out there in the, is in the community. Um, we talked about several indicators of access to services. Um, I think it's it was really timely and important that we talked about uh, wanting some data indicators around the workforce because that's just such a huge challenge and I think very likely to be an area of focus in, in the upcoming legislative session and in some of the decisions that are being made around financing services, I think is going to be done from a perspective of thinking about how do we support the workforce. And um, we also talked about quality indicators, costs, as well as outcomes. So we have several, um, we had several recommendations and data indicators in each of those categories. So our table will include the indicator, um, a source of where that data would come from, and including places where that data source may be blank. And that probably represents a data development need for our state. And then also a table uh, and also a column that will speak to um, who the lead agency might be for that data collection. And we'll organize that work around our framework components above. And then as Tim started to mention, um, the report includes a number, a couple of different recommendations. Um, the first of which is that the 12 state agencies that are supporting children's behavioral health uh, would participate in P20WIN and that the behavioral system would direct data requests um, and cross system data requests through P20WIN. And we may still refine this a bit. And Scott, if Scott Gall is on the line, um, I, we did have a conversation with the P20WIN executive board yesterday, and they had a couple of suggested tweaks to that recommendation. But but by and large, I think it generally still speaks to what, um, what this group wants to lift up. And then secondly, and importantly, I think if, if uh, more requests from the behavioral health system partners are gonna be going through P20WIN, our part two of our recommendation is that to ensure that that initiative has adequate resources to be able to handle those requests um, and to do so in a timely manner. And then finally, um, a recommendation to adopt the framework and indicators 
um, that identify system level achievement gaps. And what we talked about in this group is really focusing on what are the pain points in our behavioral health system and how can we consistently monitor those pain points so that we know if we're making progress in, in gaps that we um, are aware of existing in the behavioral health system. So that's a lot. I just, I just dropped a lot on you. And um, let me just pause there and either Tim or anybody else in the group, um, any comments that you want to make, questions that you want to ask, and we can go back to other slides or, or we can even maybe pull up the draft report if we need to look at some specifics. Yeah. Uh, uh, so just uh, we, what we didn't comment on, Jeff, which we probably should have in terms of preparation for this, but um, just as a reminder to the group, kind of there's the short term, intermediate and long term in that ultimately what most of the work that we've been talking about is really on the long term um, uh, kind of scale. And that this notion that ultimately <clears throat> getting indicators as quickly as possible from a large uh, number of uh, data sources that could be useful for us in terms of measuring how well the system is performing uh, was really the long-term gold standard, if you will. And that's really the, the, the driving force be behind supporting P20 win. The second uh, kind of the intermediate and short term is um, <clears throat> the 12 state departments for children's behavioral health um, kind of sign up and become both a supporter and a customer too. So that uh, as soon as we are able to get um, the state agencies who are all involved to join, <clears throat> and it may not be that every one of them joins because they don't all necessarily have data to, to put in, but the notion of joining as a customer, and we would like to know uh, X, Y, and Z, and then see if we can put out a question to them um, in the near future that would help us uh, that's driven by data that they're able to collect as a result of kind of the agencies um, buying in and starting to, to, to drive data. So, so there's a lot there. Um, so really, I'm not sure any of those are short term because they're all kind of off in the future, but at least uh, the notion of, of at least acknowledging the support to P20 win and then again, joining as a customer and um, a supporter could we could potentially see as a short term kind of goal. So I just wanted to kind of structure all of the work that this group has done in kind of that sh uh, short, intermediate and long term and that most of the work that we su saw out of this group from the beginning has been long term. So so any uh, thoughts, comments or questions from any? Yeah, I see uh, Kathy's hand is up. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, I I reviewed the report and I thought you did a good job with it. The one comment that I would make is that essentially all those elements under the ongoing improvements, um, I think that there really needs to be a recommendation related to um, the initiative, keeping those elements in mind when moving forward. Because, you know, for example, the inconsistency in how data is collected, if if all the agencies continue to collect that data inconsistently, we'll never get to a point where it's easy enough to, to compare um, metrics. So that's the one comment I would make. It seemed to be that, you know, all that work we did and talking about kind of all the challenges, there was nothing reflected in the recommendations related to that. So call out that point more directly and yeah. be more lift explicit. Yeah, yeah, lift it up as a direct recommendation, essentially, right? Yeah. I, I would, yeah, that's my recommendation because, you know, those were all the elements that we thought were necessary in order to have ongoing improvement. Um, and so I, it, it's easy enough for folks when they look at a report to just jump to the <clears> recommendations, <throat> right? And skip over that piece. But if yeah. we kind of essentially say, you know, our, our recommendations are to examine um, the issues outlined under ongoing improvement um, moving forward. I think it would be a stronger recommendation. Yeah. yeah, great point. Thank you for that, Kathy. Other comments? And by the way, we can pull up, um, I know Elise has got the report if draft available. If we want to, if you want to look at a specific section, let us know. <laughs> We, oh, there we go. Um, so if you want to look uh, specifically at a section, let us know and talk a little bit further about something you see here. Um, we can go that direction as well.
the other uh, comment why people are thinking or um, coming up with their questions, um, what, what is nice about this group is you all have um, a passion around data. Uh, a number of you are it's concretely your role and function or a part of your role and function. So one of the things is as we make these recommendations moving forward is, and as we end our work, I, I think one of the things we'd like to see is you all become champions to support the ongoing development of Connecticut's data agenda. I think that's a really important part of this. And really once we make these recommendations and then just to be able to always, uh, to kind of check back, hey, whatever happened, are, are, are you state departments doing that? Are you following through? So there's, there's some informal accountability that you all bring to the table by virtue of participating in this. And we'd ask you to kind of take that role um, seriously and um, be able to prompt uh, the system forward as needed. So I just wanted to make that comment. Um, and additionally, I don't want to put Scott on the, on the spot. I just thought of something, Scott, and uh, I'll let you think about it. Um, but if, if, if this group, there's members of this group that are passionate about that, is there a location with the either any of the data integration work that OPM is doing or specifically the P20 Win project that group members might migrate from this group to another group that could support data integration as a whole? Or is that something that could be developed? Is, there, is that um, something, um, I don't know if you have anything like this work group, Scott, that, that some folks might be interested in. Actually, I was going to ask a question, so I can mull that over while asking the question. Or sure. Um, although I uh, won't be able to listen to the answer as much. But the um, I was going to ask maybe just for a little clarification on the point that Kathy made about the areas for ongoing improvement. It would just help us like a um, somewhat new to some of the issues at hand. Like, are there ex where are the examples of where the the you know the inconsistency is a challenge sort of uh, a day to day basis? Like just a, some. To get a sense of more concretely of like oh here's where this is really a challenge for us i think the report under the ongoing um improvement does a good job of outlining um these issues so for example you know number three is inconsistent democratic demographic data is collected across agencies um and so I think in our discussion, we did bring up other examples, but for example, um, the race and ethnicity um, classifications that are used across systems are not consistent. Um, some have more detail, some have less detail, some categorize, um, you know, and I'm looking at that between DEMIS, for example, and DCF, because as a provider, we report on both of them. And we have to crosswalk it all within our electronic health record in order to do that. So between DDAP and PI, there's, there's, it's inconsistent. And so when we want to look um, specifically at race and ethnicity in, the, in order to look at health equity, it's going to get complicated in order to figure out those classifications. So that's one example I can give. Just as a follow-up that I was going to ask, are there examples other than race, ethnicity, language, or just the demographic data in general, because I think that is where the, the legislation that have, that's cited here that passed, you know, uh, we will see uh, improvements in standardization in that area. And I think that's also um, likely to occur for other demographic data at some point in the future. I guess I was curious if there's things outside of the demographic data where the consistency across agencies is an issue, or if um, if this really does cover it, which would be great, you know, I just uh, that's uh, kind of the clarification is just helpful. Uh, it, one of the things I'm recalling, Scott, and um, some of it is uh, beyond this work group that I've heard our provider community share is, is there's just um, a vast wide array of different uh, platforms, uh, ways in which providers are asked to report data, um, different um, operational definitions, as was just stated. But also it, sometimes within even the same State Department, there may be three, four, five different data sources that also are different. And um, so I think there's been, a, we had some general conversations about that. Um, I don't know if, um, you know, how they translate uh, uh, overall. And, you know, is it possible for us all to be aligned in one data platform? I'm not, I'm not sure we're suggesting that, but some of the, uh, uh, the challenges that I've heard have been around um, 
huge, huge differences in the way in which we go about asking providers to report data or we go about collecting data. I would just add to um, what we learned from the financial mapping, Tim, in, in terms of uh, under the system indicator of cost and actual cost of delivering services, state departments define behavioral health services differently as well. And what one state department may define have an operational definition for a behavioral health service may be different than another state department. So operational definitions when you're going across 12 state agencies is gonna be really important. Or the other piece I would add to that, Chris, we discovered that sometimes the operational definition is coming from the person you're asking for the data that day. So that yeah. there's not necessarily a defined um, uh, parameter, even within a state department. Well, is this inside of this or outside of this? So for example, again, and we were just thinking as something as simple as children's um, mental health and substance use services and um, in what ways are you funding something connected to children and families? Um, so it is a, it was a broad question. So we understand that's not an easy question, but what we did learn is even the way state departments categorized their funding and the way they identified them was, was very inconsistent. And it was a lot of work for us to get, um, try to uh, baseline the state departments in order to just get you know, basic financial data about how much is spent in Connecticut. I appreciate you raising that point, Chris, because it does, I mean, there's some nuances in each one of those um, major kind of framework categories. There's nuanced um, information that we could use either as ex examples or as specific areas where we could be recommending action so that um, under costs, I think we could be, we could provide a little bit more detail in our report about what kinds of issues exist in costs and expenditures, like you've just described that was part of the fiscal analysis. Um, so yeah, we will, um, we can add some of those details in the relevant section. Uh, okay. And Eva, Eva Kaufman is asking the question, Elise, um, about whether the, the draft report, where it will be available in the meeting minutes. I know the, the meeting minutes are available on the plan for children website, but, um, and um, as we, continue our conversation today, we'll be updating this report um, so that, and send it out to this group, um, an updated version to this group as well. Right, all, yeah. Eva, I'm happy to follow up. I'm sorry that you didn't receive it, um, but I can send, um, I can send this version to you and then the full group will get a revised version again um, once we've incorporated your feedback. And just in general, as our work groups come to an end, this one um, ending this month uh, after this meeting and um, uh, this couple of the other work groups ending a, another meeting later, but um, as those final recommendations and reports are finalized, all of that will be posted on the website along with all the meeting minutes. So if you haven't had a chance to go there, I'd encourage you to go there. We have rolled out a new and improved version of the website that we're pretty proud of. Um, and it's a much easier navigatable uh, website. It not only has all of the activities related to the children's plan since inception, it has all the activities that have been supported, that support the plan in particular, the Connect System of Care um, uh, federal grant that has been now a number of years supporting a number of these infrastructure activities uh, for the children's uh, uh, implementation plan advisory board. So just encourage folks to do that. All Make right. Recommend can yeah. I add a recommendation under, um, under the work group recommendations? I know, I don't know if it's possible through the P20 win, but we talk about uh, race, ethnicity, sex, gender, and age. I'm curious to know if we could also include geography um, either, you know, zip code or uh, the five CTs or what we talked about previously, the Area Deprivation Index, the ADI. I think zip code and where you live can have even more of an impact um, on some of these outcomes. So if we can disaggregate some of these results by geography would be um, really important. Good point. Can you make sure that's in there too? Yes. Yeah, so, so if we had that full dashboard in, in place today and we were all that data was running, being run routinely, 
we can say how well Connecticut's doing, but then divide it up by different areas. And you'd see that maybe some areas are not doing as well as others. So great, great suggestion. And Maureen is suggesting we could we also include um, adoption type. I think you're saying adoption type, Maureen. Can you tell me a little bit more what you mean by that? Sure. I mean, we're we're you know we see a lot of um, differences in how kids respond to provider services and the types of services that are being provided to families who are formed through adoption. Um, you know, it's interesting when we work with families who um, have adopted through a state system versus internationally versus kinship related, there, there does seem to be differences in how kids and families are responding to the types of services they're getting. I think that would be a good indicator uh, to suggest whether or not we have a robust enough system to be meeting everybody's needs. Um, and obviously, biological versus adopted, I think is important to, to identify when we're collecting data. Thanks, Maureen. Other questions or comments? This is Scott, sorry. If I can just go back to Tim's question earlier too, is there another group that's similar to this from people continuing to, at least as under um, what I know, no, there is not. Um, there is for P21, there's a variety of different sort of governing bodies. So there's an executive board, a data governing board, and then a more uh, informal um, data stewards group. And we've kept them primarily to the agencies that are directly part of it. So if you were, a, you know, staff of an agency, then I think there's like an easy way to participate. The meetings are all public meetings. Um, so anyone can attend them, um, but they don't. I think serve the same purpose as this, uh, which is not to say that we couldn't set something like this up. So I think that, you know, I would welcome, you know, through uh, maybe um, Tim and Jeff, if there's feedback and, you know, if there's uh, a need for setting up something like this. I mean, there's a lot of good questions that have come up. So there's nothing that prohibits us from setting something up that would, you know, keep some of this going. We just do not have a um, format in which we're doing this now. Sure. I, I would offer, um, Scott, what, um, uh, what we did with some resources of the Connect Grant a few years ago was to set up a, a, a standing data integration meeting that had a lot of family participants in it um, with uh, your predecessor, Tyler. Um, I don't want to set up a meeting for the sake of a meeting, but if there's clearly an agenda that, and there are members of this work group that would like to continue to per participate in moving the state of Connecticut forward with a data integration agenda, it may be worthwhile and maybe it doesn't need to be uh, monthly, maybe it could be quarterly. Uh, the question is, if it's quarterly, then is that enough? Do people feel connected to the work? So uh, maybe Scott, you and I can have um, <clears throat> a conversation about whether we would want to resurrect that work group. And then um, at, we'd ask folks, if you're on this work group now, if uh, some kind of work group, kind of a permanent, more permanent standing work group was to be developed for kind of a larger data integration um, uh, uh, goal beyond just children's uh, mental health. If you're interested in something like that, just drop us a note in the chat box and then we'll be able to um, get something back out there for folks um, to respond to if, if that um, offer goes forward. So just, but appreciate that, Scott, and that feedback. I wasn't sure if you guys had something ready made, but, but uh, would make that offer. Chris, go ahead. I'm just wondering if um, under the recommendation three and thinking more about adopting the framework, should we be also including some specific language on development of an implementation plan? So not only just adopting the framework, but the concrete work that's going to take to actually implement and actually adopt this framework. Should we be calling that out as a specific recommendation that, okay, this is our recommendation report, but within that, we also would need to develop an implementation plan for the 12 state agencies on how to go about doing that work as well. That is a good point. And, and sounds I mean, like another. <laughs> why do this, right? If it's not going to happen. Uh, it, also, it also sounds like it's an, it's the, I mean, somebody has got to do that. So that means right. that would be another work group probably too. So. Well, I'm just thinking about, I mean, it kind of, that relates to a 
just a general thought that I had um, as I cr criticize a report that I had a hand in developing. Um, just the idea that there isn't a clear sense about who picks. I, I know that early in the report, we're saying that it rolls up to the implementation advisory board for further action. And I think what Chris has just said kind of speaks to, to that, just the need for really for this work group, but really the other work groups we're doing as well, for there to be a clear kind of accountability and transparency process in, in how these recommendations are being implemented. Um, so that I think it's a point well taken and we should really kind of think about not just for this work group, but for really for all of the ones that we've been doing the last few months, what that accountability and transparency and implementation process looks like. And I was just looking at the kind of the recommendation one of the 12, 12 state agencies supporting the children's behavior health in the state participating in P20 win. I mean, supporting is a kind of a passive verb. Um, is there any way to make that much more concrete and uh, active in the way how the 12 state agencies will be able to do that? Let's hear it, Chris. Lay it out for us. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm posing the question. <laughs> I could throw a few things up at the wall and see what sticks. Um, I mean, I think what you say in the beginning too of uh, identifying champions and leaders at each of the state agencies is making sure that you have the senior leadership on board at each of those 12 state agencies will definitely help support and make sure that the work gets done. I think that's going to be a key indicator of just having the uh, leadership available and also not only the leadership, but then also the technical expertise within each of the state agencies that is the identified person that may make the request, the data requests or the specific operational definitions. So important when you're making data requests that you're very clear on what is the methodology and the operational definition. So you do also need a kind of a technical point person at each of the state agencies to make those requests. Those are two things off the top of my head. See, I knew you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> you gave us a great start. And if others have other ideas about getting more concrete and specific about that piece, go ahead, uh, jump, jump in by all means. Elizabeth is suggest yeah. suggesting we go with, we'll commit to participating and ensure implementation of dot, dot, dot. Yeah, and I think, you know, and we can include that type of language language along with those specifics that, um, that Chris is mentioning. All right, great. Okay, anything else? Okay. So I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm, my, my brain is really ticking on um, Chris's point here, and I'm trying to piece together my offer to Scott and I'm also trying to be aware that I could not continue, and I don't think, Jeff, you can continue to kind of continue this work group. And our, our, our goal for this work group was really to end and to wrap up. So I'm wondering maybe again, Scott, and I don't want to, I'm, I'm not committing to this, but if in a conversation with you, you, again, using some of the support and staffing time and resources from the Connect Grant, if we offer up to the tri chairs and the implementation advisory board that Chris's recommendation be kind of a phase two of this, and that we get much more concrete about implementing um, some suggestions here. And maybe again, we'll come to the table, Scott, from a children's behavior health perspective, but maybe there is some concrete uh, suggestions there that could be offered up for P20 wins infrastructure development and support to that, that is more broad than just the children's behavioral health plan. So um, I'm just trying to figure out um, a way to, or in a mechanisms to do that. So um, I'm just thinking out loud. So stay tuned folks. Um, I see a couple of folks are starting to populate with saying they would be interested. So We'll, we'll figure out some kind of mechanism and um, get something out to you all. Exactly the cadence and when and all that will we'll, we'll be uncertain until we have all that, but uh, let's definitely think about that. Yep. Let me add something. I'm just gonna think out loud also since Tim already did it and just um, <laughs> you can redirect me, but the, um, 
you know, I think a rationale for pursuing the the agency participation in P21 is because it has a lot of the governance structure that addresses, I think, some of what Chris has um, brought up, that there's there's an executive board that has executive leadership. Jeff was kind enough to participate in the discussion um, with that group yesterday. There's a second data governing board that is like the data person at each agency um, who's designated and they meet monthly. And so there's some sort of governance structure that has you know people with kind of official designation to take part in it for the agencies that are explicit um, participants in it. Where we um, do not have uh, in at this moment, I think, in place some of the resources to fully take forward um, what's come out of this group would be really getting to like the nuts and bolts of the data um, that you want to be able to look at the um, health of the behavioral system, um, whether or how that data is collected, how that data makes it to different state agencies, and then the ability and authority of those agencies to um, collect it or to, to share that data and link it with other agencies. I think the example that, um, I'll just use the example that Maureen had brought up um, uh, about adoption uh, and expose my own ignorance. Like I have no idea if, um, if providers collect that, you know, at the point of service. And so like, that's a question that, you know, we would need to, you know, identify the answer. Like, do people collect this information? If they do, you know, how is it collected? If they don't, why don't they collect it? What would it be, what would it be entailed in like modifying the agency system or the reporting form to do that. And if it's collected, like how does it make its way forward? Is it the same way, you know, across agencies? So like, and there may be good reasons that people don't collect it or, you know, it's not feasible. So like, I'm not proposing that um, that, that particular um, item be collected or not, but just someone, you know, will have to go through at that level of detail and just be like, okay, you know, this is or is not collected. And like, here's where it goes, you know, when it gets reported up to DCF or DINAS or whomever, um, it's reported to. Uh, and so that level of detail, and particularly like it really will help to have it with, I think, both what um, Tim had mentioned, both the sort of provider and then the family perspective in that, you know, what's the, um, the value of providing this information was the experience of kind of directly providing it. But to make a request that produces data that is actionable for children's behavioral health plan, we need to get into that level of detail about the individual elements in the fields and, you know, like why do these categories, you know, differ or is this collected at all? And I, that's the piece that I think we're just, um, you know, we don't have in place the, right now the resource to do that, but a lot of the, like that's a lot of discussion in this group um, is getting to that point. So I think some of, I think what you're uh, addressing or asking for it is addressed because the governance structure is in place for those things from an agency level, but there's not, you know, someone will have to do the work to put together the level of detail to produce a request for data that you would actually, you know, use and want. I don't know if that, well, first of all, let me see if that is like roughly sounds correct um, to folks, but that's just sort of my understanding of it. But like a takeaway from this is figuring out what do you want in the data that you would get back, you know, on the behavioral health system as a whole, I'm starting to say like, these are the element, which is, are, you know, they are a lot of like, you have the indicators, you have the, um, the list of sources kind of sketched out, but getting into, you know, a little more detail on those, I think that's where that's helpful. Chris brought up zip code versus town versus census tract, like those are all choices, like someone has to pick, you know, which one do we want? And, you know, does someone collect zip code? If no one collects zip code, we're not going to get a report with zip code. So in short, if we're saying we're going to become a customer, we need a process by which we will become a customer. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of yeah. So yeah, uh, where these and, and this is like just also anecdotally, like where a lot of these things break down, um, and the reason for like pushing through on this, a lot of these break down is because people want something. You know, this customer wants the data, um, and then the people who have the data um, are you know asking, well, you have to tell us what you want. And it just never gets to that level of detail where it's kind of actionable um, as a request. And so the things break down because the like customer and the supplier um, don't ever kind of agree to the actual terms, but we can get to that through the kind of discussion that this group is having. And I think that governance structure that's in place now is just sort of like, all right, well, what does the customer actually want, you know, at the level of detail that the agencies would need to make a determination about whether it's possible or even to fulfill the request. I think, again, like, I think it's pretty close to that. I don't think it's too far off, but that's, that's the sort of like last one. All right. I think we're convinced that we need a phase two. <laughs> so stay tuned for it and we'll figure out, uh, again, we'll, we'll try to, um, I, I can almost assure you that I will not be able to facilitate, but I certainly could be a part of that to get that thing going 
and we'll have the way uh, the Connect Grant has worked uh, for the last um, eight years at least, we've had um, staffing that's been able to support the work groups. So they are kind of responsible for organization and minutes and agenda the way um, CHDI is in this role here uh, in Elise. So I think we could probably peel away some resources again from the Connect grant and the labor that's there. And then um, we just need the volunteers as uh, was just articulated in, in these last few comments uh, to participate to kind of get us to that next point. So um, what I think Jeff, uh, and at least maybe what we can do is we could uh, develop an outline similar to this uh, being what, very clear what the work group goals are. Um, again, picking some meeting times and frequencies, and then um, clearly stating the objectives. Um, my, what I would like to do with that is to also put some parameters around how long we think it might take so we could, we could at least see if we can achieve it by a certain number of meetings. Um, and then if there is an appropriate place for um, a work group to support P20 win in general for the overall thing. Again, we can think about pivoting to a broader agenda than, than beyond just the children's behavior health. So uh, just uh, you all have helped us to carve this out. As we came into this meeting, we weren't sure exactly what would come out at the very end of this. So we appreciate that. Um, Elizabeth. But would you want to make a recommendation explicitly in this accountability to the children's behavioral health plan that that the you know the data implementation and all the things that we're talking about would we be reported back to the children's behavioral health plan implementation advisory board on some stated regular basis because a work group to you know to like to address the issue that was brought up of can providers collect that data how do we do that having the family voice the provider voice and the agency voice sort of accountable to continuing to problem solve another work group could you know could build out of that it would help us to keep track of the implementation yeah yeah so i i agree completely so all those work groups as have historically reported back up uh the question again so we, we those are the details we'd need to work out but we definitely would there would be an accountability structure in place by virtue of A, this work group, and B, by the Connect Grant reporting up to the Implementation Advisory Board also. So we could certainly be clear about that. Um, my worry is, again, making it an open-ended, long-term standing group. So we'd want to kind of have probably fix that and then see where we get to. And then um, whatever that fixed rate is, if it's a 10 meetings or 10 months or um, six meetings at six months or five meetings or six meetings every other month that, you know, we port out quarterly or twice a year to, to the, to the tri chairs and the implementation advisory board so that everybody's aware of what's occurring. So, but those could all be determined as we go. And as we can develop that skeleton um, structure for goals and objectives. Was that, would, would that meet your need, Elizabeth? Does that make sense? Yes, I, I think it's just important. I, you know, it's sort of the, 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 the point that Chris brought up is accountability for implementation and continuing to support that we're doing this. We made these recommendations and now they're happening. So, you know, a regular reporting back on progress of implementation of our data system, you know, from all 12 state departments and any participants, you know, that's what I'm saying is we might want to put in the in the recommendations an explicit recommendation that there be a requirement every year, every quarter, you know, every six months, but but then following through with that. That all, you know, it could even word that all, you know, all 12 state, all, all participants that agree to this would, you know, be accountable to reporting in Right. And so just uh, why, why I love that idea myself, too, is that historically, um, what I've witnessed at my own State Department and others is that um, the folks doing oversight of the data piece are, are not always robustly funded as well as they should and not, don't have enough positions. They're often understaffed, under-resourced. And what I like about this work group is that inside-outside accountability, that's why I kind of also opened up with that same thing, is informally this kind of work group can, can hold 
some accountability by just the virtue of our participation, but I, you, you and others are suggesting, Chris is suggesting much more concrete accountability, which I, which I appreciate. Um, I'm not sure, so sure all the State Department leadership will always appreciate it, but I like it because it does give us a vehicle by which, you know, people can, uh, they'll, they'll need to be a responsiveness to it. So I appreciate that. And that could even be part of the wording is that given that there is already legislative, you know, sort of mandate for participation in the implementation advising that the data has been one of the things that makes that hard um, if we don't have the data that allows it. So as you know, it could even be worded to fully continue to make progress in the implementation of our, you know, our plan. It is essential that blah, blah, blah. All right, so what I'm gonna suggest is I would really like to resist adding another meeting to this work group, but what that means is these recommendations that you will see in the next draft, the iteration, um, please give it a priority of your attention for rereading the suggestions and edits that you've made. I think um, what I'm really excited about is the, the handful of additions that have made it, I think, really take the report to another level that I don't think uh, was there it would be coming into this meeting. So please uh, give it your attention and give us your feedback as the edit goes out. We do want to get it uh, up to leadership, um, even though these are longer term recommendations. Data integration is, is necessary on so many levels throughout so many projects. We just need to make sure it stays on the desktop and, it's, and it gets um, an intentional focus. And I think that's really our desire here. So uh, appreciate these last few additions and comments. And just want to comment, by the way, this work group has been this way from the beginning. We just so appreciate you all participating in such an active way. We felt, you know, this kind of work group is always you're not quite sure how dry that will be, um, but it, it, this group has been very, very active and I, we feel really good about the work that this group has done. So we do wanna call that out and just uh, share our appreciation for all the great suggestions that have been made throughout these number of months that we've been meeting. So we really do appreciate that. That may have sounded like an ending. That was unintentional. Yeah, if, yeah, if we are, say, if we are over, up. that's okay. But I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> yeah, we might we might be able to give you a few minutes back. I mean, and, and again, knowing that you'll have another chance to look at a draft and give us your feedback. But as, since Tim opened the door, I'll, I'll just add my appreciation to this group uh, for help for getting us to this point. And um, it's been, as Tim said, very active and engaged, and we've all um, made a real wonderful contributions to the end product. So really appreciate everybody's time and effort on this. So when you send Any out the revised, thought? go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, when you send out the revised draft, will you also include a date that you need feedback uh, yeah, from us sure. by? Sure, yeah, sounds good. And we'll give, try to give you at least a week on that. I mean, I think we had said we wanted to have all of our reports in no later than the end of the calendar year, but I think we have the possibility of getting it in sooner than that. Um, we're in pretty good shape on this work group. So, but yeah, we will we'll include kind of a due date for you. Great. All right, any last thoughts or questions? All right, thanks again, everybody. Uh, keep an eye on your email and we'll, we'll send that draft out when it's ready and um, get your final thoughts that way. Appreciate all your time and enjoy the rest of the week. Have a great Thanksgiving. Great. Thank you yeah, all. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you.